So here we have the sling psychrometer that we were looking at earlier today. Yes, we've got some two readings here that are quite distinct. We've got 23 degrees on the dry bulb temperature and we've got 17 degrees on the wet. So here we have a dry bulb temperature of 23 degrees. Here we have a wet bulb temperature of 17 degrees. We then go from the dry bulb temperature and, and the wet bulb temperature and we plot it as accurately as we can at the intersection of these two points and we read off a relative humidity of 75%. Moving across the chart, we have the relative humidity. Where the relative humidity is 100%, the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature are exactly the same. The intersection tells us that it is 100% relative humidity. Let's just do one more example. So let's say we've got a wet bulb temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and we move across this line here. Here we have the dry bulb temperature of 25 degrees and so we plot up this graph here and the intersection of these two points tells us what the relative humidity is. This is 60%, this is 70%, and so therefore we would have a reading of 65% relative humidity. Here we have 30 degrees Celsius plotting up this curve. The intersection of these two points tells us the relative humidity. In this case, we're reading off 40% relative humidity. One more example. Here we have again 20 degrees Celsius coming down this line here. Here we have 35 degrees Celsius coming up this line. And the intersection of these two points gives us a relative humidity of 25%. So, the comfort zone is what we're talking about. How do we represent the comfort zone? Well, roughly in this area here would be the comfort zone that we would find acceptable. I'll represent it here. So anything below 20 degrees Celsius is getting too cold. Anything above 30 degrees is getting too hot in a normal type of office environment. The particular relative humidity that we like is around 50%. So the ideal conditions that we'd like to have in an office is between 22 degrees and 23 degrees Celsius. So when we plot here and plot here, ideal conditions for human comfort in typical office environment. Using the sling psychrometer, we're taking an outside reading. We're in this vegetation deliberately because we're trying to pick up, has the relative humidity changed? Looking at the, the wet bulb temperature is 19 degrees Celsius, just a fraction below. The dry bulb temperature is 26 degrees Celsius. The relative humidity has changed. 
one would expect that. It's been raining, the moist air is blowing across this vegetation. It's creating an environment that is a little bit hot and sticky right now. That's okay in this condition, but we can use this feature in building design. In outback New South Wales, where it's hot and dry, a lot of homesteads deliberately build and plant a lot of trees around their homestead. When the wind blows, which might be hot and dry, as it blows through the trees, it picks up the moisture and gives the sensation of being cooler in the house. We're familiar with air conditioning. Air conditioning is where you take moisture out of the air. The converse, which is used a lot in outback New South Wales, is conditioned air. This is an evaporative cooler. An evaporative cooler introduces moisture into the inside of the house, making people feel cooler. That's expensive. We can get the same effect by planting lots of trees around the house homestead when the prevailing winds are blowing hot air through the trees the people on the receiving side, on the leeward side, feel cooler inside. A smart way to design. This is part of passive solar design. We're using passive solar design to give the effect of coolness inside what would be normally a hot environment. We're in the car park area now. It's a vast expanse of black asphalt, hot mix. There's some heat radiating off the ground. The air itself is feeling quite warm just from the heat coming off from the black asphalt. I'm holding the sling psychrometer as close to the ground as possible because the relative humidity should be different to the conditions that we were looking at earlier in the vegetation. So we're looking now at a wet bulb temperature of 18 degrees and the dry bulb temperature of 25 degrees. Not much difference, but there's a slight difference in the relative humidity. We would expect this air to be a little drier than what was in the vegetation earlier. We would expect this air to be warmer and therefore it would have less humidity. The whole idea of relative humidity is dependent upon the temperature of the air. The higher the temperature of the air, the more moisture it can carry. The colder the temperature of the air, the less moisture it can carry. And so therefore, relative humidity is related directly to the actual temperature of the air that is carrying that moisture. We use this in building. We know that in air conditioning, we lower the temperature of the air and so consequently the moisture that is in the air falls out of it. We have what is called a condensation tray under an air conditioning unit, catching the moisture that has been removed from the air coming through the air conditioner. The condensate drain drains outside. That moisture has come directly from the air that was carrying it. But because the temperature has dropped, the air can't carry that moisture anymore. And so consequently, it is dropped out of that moist air. We capture it, we drain it safely outside the building. When we heat the air, it's able to carry more moisture. But when we're designing buildings, 
we want to aim for between 22 and 23 degrees Celsius. Depending on the outside air temperature, which might be 10 or 15 degrees more, we want to air condition. We want to drop that air temperature. The moisture has to go somewhere. This is very different to conditioned air, which is what we experience with evaporative coolers. An evaporative cooler adds moisture. We feel cooler only because the air that's blowing over us is more moisture laden. It's a lot cheaper. Air conditioning costs a lot more because effectively you're taking moisture out of the air when you drop the air temperature. We've turned on the space heaters that are around this large volume area. We feel a lot warmer, but when we look at the sling psychrometer, the temperature is still 24 degrees Celsius. We feel a lot warmer because the infrared heat that's coming off these space heaters makes us feel warmer. The air in between hasn't heated up much at all, perhaps one degree. But the reality is we feel warmer. So the concept of these space heaters is such that if you want to make people feel warmer in a large volume area, like a warehouse or a factory, we use these infrared space heaters to give that effect on our skin of making us feel warmer. The beauty of this is it's a lot cheaper to use these infrared gas heaters or electric heaters than trying to heat the whole volume of air with air conditioners. To pump in enough air to heat the air temperature by two or three degrees would require a lot of heat from boilers or from electric heaters. The reason why this is important is that with whole of life building concept, it's not only the construction costs, but the running costs of the building. And so we are reducing the running costs of the building if we were in a factory or a warehouse by using these infrared space heaters. This is not practical in an office environment because the heat is too intense in small enclosures. But in a large area such as a warehouse or a factory or where we are right now, very effective way of heating the whole of the room. With the heat banks on, the infrared heat heating up this va vast volume of air, we felt quite warm in here. One would have thought that a lot of the heat would have been escaping through the glass. But this is not the case. Even with a vast expanse of glass behind me, the sensation of feeling warm from the infrared heaters was very powerful in its effect. We even felt uncomfortable. Another way of heating a large volume of air is to use black heat. Black heat is out of the infrared range. The wavelength is a lot longer. The simple example that I can give is in the shearing sheds of long ago. The reality is that the corrugated iron roof was their only protection from the sun above. Below, they were working in quite adverse conditions. The black heat was radiating through the corrugated iron. We use that modern phenomena in heating vast expanses. Some of you might have seen those black U-shaped tubes. They're black in colour, generating a lot of black heat. The reason why we use this in building design, it's a lot cheaper to heat and make people feel warm using infrared or black heat. We're not heating the air itself. Air conditioning or reverse cycle air conditioning is where you are heating the air itself and raising the overall temperature and making people feel warm in reverse air, air conditioning. Here we're talking about using infrared or black heat to heat vast volumes 
giving people that sensation that they're warm in a factory or in an industrial landscape. 